Read Acts 23, 12 to 23. And when it was day, certain of the Jews banded together and bound themselves under a curse, saying that they would neither eat nor drink till they had killed Paul. And they were more than 40, which had made this con uh, conspiracy. And they came to the chief priests and elders and said, we have bound ourselves under a great curse that we will eat nothing until we have slain Paul. Now, therefore, ye with the council signify to the chief captain that he bring him down unto you tomorrow, as though ye would inquire something more perfectly concerning him. And we, or ever he come near, are ready to kill him. And when Paul's sister, uh, Paul's sister's son. His nephew. Their, so Paul's sister's son, his nephew, what did he do? Uh, heard of their lying in wait. He went and entered into the castle and told Paul. Then Paul called one of the centurions unto him and said, Bring this young man unto the chief captain, for he hath a certain thing to tell him. So he took him and brought him to the chief captain and said, Paul, the prisoner called me unto him and prayed me to bring this young man unto thee, who hath something to say unto thee. Then the chief captain took him by the hand and went with him aside privately and asked him, What is that thou hast to tell me? <clears throat> and he said, the Jews have agreed to desire thee that thou wouldest bring down Paul tomorrow into the council as though they would inquire something or somewhat, sorry, somewhat of him more perfectly. But do not thou yield unto them for their lie in wait for him of them more than 40 men, which have bound themselves with an oath mm -hmm. that they will neither eat nor drink till they have killed him. And now are they ready looking for a promise from thee? So the chief captain then let the young man depart and charged him. See thou tell no man that thou hast showed these things to me. Mm -hmm. um, and then you said to 23, right? Mm -hmm. Read that's the key verse. Okay. Now notice 23. What does the, cent the, the centurion assign? Read. Uh, and he called unto him two centurions saying, make ready 200 soldiers to go to uh I'm not sure for the exact. Yeah, sorry, it's all right. Exactly. You're not going to visit anytime soon. But yeah, so how many okay. soldiers? Um, two hundred soldiers. Okay, to do what? And, then, not keep um, and horsemen. Three score and ten, meaning sixty. Okay. Oh, okay. okay. Seventy actually. Three score, sixty and ten. Seventy. That's King James. Okay. Seventy. So two hundred soldiers and seventy horsemen, right? Yes. And uh, spearmen, uh, two hundred, at the third hour of the night. Okay, so now Paul appeals to over 200 guards with spears to protect him to kill these Jews if they make an attempt on his life. Yes. Why did he do that if you don't have a right to protect yourself and your life? Now, go to Luke 22, 35 to 38. Luke 22, 35, 38. If you guys wonder what I'm doing, it's my cat here. He won't leave or she won't leave. I keep forgetting it's a she. She wants me to pet her. She's used to me petting her. Luke 22, 35 to 30 end, 38. Luke 22, 35, 38. Read slowly. Okay. See what he says here. 35 through 38? Yes, what our Lord says. Okay. And he said unto them, When I sent you without purse and scrip and shoes, lack ye anything? And they said, Nothing. Then said he unto them, but now he that hath a purse, let him take it, and likewise his scrip. And he that hath no sword, let him sell his garment and buy one. Now understand what Jesus is saying. When you're with me, I took care of you. But now the time has come. You need to care for yourselves and provide for yourselves and protect yourselves. Why? Because read 37. Why? For I say unto you, that is... That this that is written must ye be accomplished in me, and he was reckoned among the transgressors. Before you finish it, scripture prophesied I'd be numbered with the transgressors. I'd be taken away and killed with sinners. That means yes. I won't be with you physically to protect you and provide for you. So you need to protect for yourselves, provide for yourselves, and defend yourselves because this has to have a fulfillment in me. Now, how do they respond? Notice their response in 38. Luke 22, 38. Notice their response. Yeah, they said, uh, and they said, Lord, behold, here are two swords. And he said unto them, 
it is enough. Okay, now, if you read the Greek, it's not, hey, that's enough already. Don't be stupid. Because that's how some people would like to explain it away. No, no. That's sufficient. Now, the swords they're talking about, there are two types okay. of swords. You have those long swords, or you have a sword that's like a dagger, which was multi-purpose, like a knife, where you can cut food or you can stab. This was what you would carry in your pouch as you're transiting from village to village to protect yourselves against highway bandits. So he's saying, look, we have two. He goes, all right, that's enough. You have all that you need for now. So number one, why are they carrying swords? Number two, why is he saying that's all you need for now? That's sufficient for the task. Oh, um, it's basically like the right to, to bear arms. In their, so why didn't Jesus say get rid of it if he's against the right to bear arms and protect yourself? Well, um, that's where, like, I guess my heart objects. Um, I don't care about your heart. I want you to do with the text. Don't give me your heart. Give me the text. Why are they carrying swords? And then it's number two, why is Jesus saying that's sufficient? You have all you need for now. Be well, it would imply that he wants them to use it. In fact, go to Matthew 26 50 to 54. Okay. Yeah, your heart, Proverbs 28 26 says, The fool trusts in his heart. Jeremiah 17 9 says, The heart is desperately wicked and evil beyond cure. Who can understand it? So keep trusting your heart, and I'm going to go with the scriptures. You see the point? Yes, I, I yes, I see your point. Yeah, don't let your heart be your judge because your heart's going to get a lot of people in trouble and your heart may get a lot of people killed because your heart says, I don't have a right to protect someone who's helpless against someone stronger. And then the Lord's going to rebuke you for that. But anyway, go to Matthew 26, Matthew 26, 50 to 54. Oh, 50. Whoa. Okay. Okay. And then, um, and Jesus said unto him, friend, wherefore art thou come? When they came and laid hands on Jesus and took him, and behold, one of them which were with Jesus stretched out his hand and drew his sword and struck a servant of the high priest and smote off his ear. Wait, so you're saying Jesus' disciples are traveling with Jesus with a sword ready? Yes, I think it was revealed. Uh, was it Peter who ended up doing this? Yeah, but what, no, that's not my question. My question, yeah, it is Peter. But so they, they're, they're traveling with Jesus with swords, with weapons? Yes. Oh, wow. <laughs> So you mean they never got the memo, you should get rid of all your swords because you're with me and I'm against bearing arms? But now read no, I, what I, Jesus says, though. Yeah. Oh, wait, oh, it gets better for you, buddy. Read what Jesus says. Then Jesus said unto him, put up again thy sword into his place. Wait, wait, all... Jesus didn't say get rid of your sword, put it back in its sheath, put it back in its place? Yeah. Why didn't he say get rid of it? In case of the time where, where it's needed? But if, if bearing arms is not scriptural, it's not our right, why is Jesus sounding like someone who would be all for the NRA, the right to bear arms? Oh, no. Uh, I don't think I made the distinction. Sam, I, I understand the, uh, the self-defense. My, my issue is yeah. killing them. Um, yeah. Who told you that you can bear arms and defend yourself? And if that means killing them, then you're wrong. Where do you get that from? If self-defense means that the only way I can protect the life of this person is to take this guy's life, because if I mm -hmm. don't, then that person dies or I die. Where did Jesus say, you draw the line, you can defend yourself this far, but taking life, no. So when Paul asked Roman soldiers to defend his life, knowing that there was a potential those Jews would be killed for trying to murder mm -hmm. him, you're more spiritual than Paul? No, no, I would, I would never say anything That's like my that. point. And then on top of that, Besides Jesus saying, put the sword back in its place, he didn't say get rid of it. We put that aside. He who lives by the sword dies by the sword, which is true because we don't make our livelihood or spread the kingdom by the sword. That's not what I'm saying, and you understand that's not what I'm saying. Didn't the apostles also convert uh, centurions, Roman soldiers? Yes, they did. Like in Acts 10, Cornelius was a centurion? Yes. And then in Acts 16, if you read 30 to 34, the jailer? That got converted, converted too, right? Yes. How come 
none of those converts were told you can't be a soldier anymore you have to now leave your vocation because as christians you don't have a right you don't have a right to fight an army where you're possibly going to kill people uh, okay I, I i understand i see how come they were not told to give up their vocation and stop being uh, soldiers and and commanders of armies knowing that they go out and have to kill people you probably knew that it would be needed in times of need okay so then if we apply the logic that self-defense means you can only defend yourself to a certain extent but you can't take life then that means no christian should ever become a policeman right yeah i, I suppose if you, yeah you'd be desperately wrong if you think that a christian can't be a cop my friend you're reading the wrong bible you have to come up with your own Bible. That's my point. Anyway, I hope that makes sense, though. Think about it. Don't go by your heart. Your heart means nothing. Because God is not against just killing. He's against unjust murder. There's a difference. Killing someone justly means that person has forfeited the right to live, and his life must be taken away. And this was mandate mandated by God long before Moses. Go to Genesis 9, verses 4 to 6. Genesis 9, verses 4 to 6. And then now ask okay. the Lord to make your heart align itself with the Word of God, not make the Word of God agree with your heart. Okay. Uh, so 4 to 6. Yes. Uh, but, but flesh with the life thereof, which is in, which is the blood thereof, shall ye not eat. And surely your blood of your lives will i require yeah, i will require if anyone Sorry. takes your blood unjustly pay attention anyone who takes your blood unjustly i will require of that person whoever sheds the blood of human unjustly i will require the life of that person from the one who took it right yes you okay, now keep reading though at the hand of every beast will i require it at the hand of man at the hand of every man's brother will i require the life of man now notice six keep reading uh, whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Okay, now this is For a universal it. command. Before you move mm -hmm. on, you got to read carefully. Universal command given to Noah after the flood, long before Moses. He says, this is a command. If a man murders someone, by a man he must be put to death. Read 6 again. Whoso sheddeth man's blood, by man shall his blood be shed. Finish For it. in the image of God made he man. That's why when a man murders someone unjustly, he must be put to death justly because that's the consequence of murdering my image bearer. Okay. So where do we find in the Bible the condemnation of putting someone to death who deserves to die for murdering someone, taking a life unjustly? Mm -hmm. You got it? Yes. So don't, I don't care about your heart. Don't care about my heart. Care what the Bible says and ask the Holy Spirit to sanctify your heart, to align itself with God's thoughts, not your emotions. And you acknowledge God above your thoughts. He will then guide you to the righteous path, meaning he'll bring you to what Scripture teaches so you can understand and live it out. And that's what happened right now. You you acknowledging God. God, what what's your will? What do you say about this? And he's guiding you. And now you have to die to how you feel and think God's thoughts after him.